Anivia is back in the meta as a solid AP carry, and in this video, I'll show you how to master the comp by going over the build, what items and augments to take, how to play the early, mid, and late game, and then I'll go over some in-depth positioning examples. The build is a little flexible as we have a couple of free slots, but here are the core units for the comp. Anivia is our main carry, Nar and Nico are in there to be tanks and to also give us 3 Jade, Shi Oyu is in there to be a secondary carry and to give us 6 Jade, Lulu is in there to give us evokers and mystics. We have two extra slots at level 8, and what you add in depends on your augments and what the rest of the lobby is playing. The last two units want to be either Bard, Soraka, Nami, Yasuo, or Sona. These units activate different traits, or they are just overall strong units to complement the comp. A standard level 8 variation of the comp looks like this. Here you add in Bard for Mystics and Yasuo as a secondary carry and a great CC bot. Although Yasuo doesn't add in any synergies, there's not a great level 8 without augments here, but his kit is great for rounding out this comp. There are other variations of this board, but I'll talk more about that in the late game part of the video. Anivia is our main carry, so we prioritize making items for her first. She has one core item, and that is Morello. This item gives her a ton of AP, which makes her deal more damage. But more importantly, it makes her spell apply anti-heal. Since her spell deals damage over time, we do not want units to heal through her spell. And it also applies the anti-heal to multiple units, since her spell is AoE. The second item wants to be a damage item. This wants to be Archangels, JG, Giant Slayer, or Deathcap. Archangels is by far the best one, as fights tend to be longer, but the other ones work just fine. The third item wants to be a damage or mana generating item. This wants to be Spear of Sojin, Blue Buff, Rage Blade, or another one of the damage items mentioned as the second item. Gunblade can also work as the third item in some cases. Note that the best mana generating item is Sojin, and the worst one is Blue Buff. Since we are running Invokers, and we get attack speed from Jade, having a mana generating item is not that important, as Anivia will cast quite often without it, and our spell will deal a boatload of damage if we have 3 damage items. Here are some final builds for Anivia that you can aim for, but overall the strongest ones are the two on the left side. You focus on Anivia items throughout the game, and you make items for Nico and Shio you with the rest of the components that you get dropped. You make whichever items you can out of the components you have that are not going to be used for Anivia items. Nico wants standard tank items, but she generally wants more belt-based tank items as they scale way better with Shapeshifter. Here is a tier list of the best tank items to put on her. Note that Sunfire is only good on her if you didn't make Morello on Anivia. This is because Anti-Heal and Burn does not stack in TFT. Shiyou wants AD and healing items. Here's a tier list of the best Shiyou items you can put on him. And here are some final item builds for both Nico and Shiyou. Once again, remember to make any items you can out of the components that won't be used for Anivia items. If you get a spatula, there are no good options. Maybe you could make Dragon Master Spat if you know you're running Yasuo later and you have great items for him, but in the majority of cases, you just have to pray you get another spatula for that tactician's crown. The best augments to take for this comp are Axiom Arc, Celestial Blessing, Cybernetic Uplink, Evoker Heart or Emblem, First Aid Kit, Jade Heart or Emblem, Second Wind, Thrill of the Hunt, Ascension, Blue Battery, Essence Theft, Eternal Protection, Jeweled Lotus, Last Stand, Portable Forge, Three's Company, Trade Sector, and Y Spending. I mentioned a lot of augments there, and the best ones out of those are Celestial Blessing, Jade Heart or Emblem, Ascension, Blue Battery, Eternal Protection, and Jeweled Lotus. If all that info was a lot to take in, then check out the cheat sheet for this comp. It's available for patrons and YouTube members. Here is the quirky cheat sheet, so you know what to expect for the Jade Anivia cheat sheet that is available right now. The carousel priority for this comp is Rod, Belt, Chain, then Sword. You could even argue that Belt Start is the best, as Morello uses a Belt component and Nico wants a lot of Belts for her tank items. The best opener is to have Jade with either Ezreal or Karma Carry, but some other options that also work are Mages with Lilia Carry, Swift Shot Ezreal with any frontline, and Yone can do surprisingly well with AP items. During the early game, you can make any items for Anivia, and you make generic tank items for Nico as well. Don't make items for Shi or Yu early unless you know you're playing Jade Anivia. His items are pretty niche and won't work in that many other comps. Therefore, I tend to avoid making them in the early game. You can slam Sunfire here as well in the early game, as it's a very strong item, but you're not as excited to slam it since we have to use another item than Morello on Anivia in that case. Your early game strategy will depend a lot on how good your opener is. In some games you play for a loss streak, and in some games you play for a win streak. And if you want to learn more about how to play the early game, check out my guide where I go in-depth on that subject. 
After the Krugs round, you should have more direction towards a comp, and the general requirements to play a Nivea is to have at least one component for Morello and another component for another Nivea item. The majority of our units in this comp are 3 and 4 cost units, so the units we have after Krugs don't really matter, although we definitely prefer a Jade frontline. During the mid game, you always want to hold a Nivea, Nico, and Shio Yu if you're not playing them, and you want to hold the other units as well if you don't lose Eco for holding them. If you're weak in the mid game, it's usually best to roll at level 7 instead of level 6. This is because we really need both Nico and Shio Yu for this comp to work, and we rarely find those at level 6. You want to roll at level 7 on either stage 3, 5, or 4, 1, which when you pick depends on how much gold and HP you have. We don't want to be lower than 40 HP coming into stage 4, so if you will drop lower than that, roll at stage 3, 5. Also, if you can go to level 7 with 30 gold or more, then it's okay to roll at level 7 here as well. When rolling at level 7, you want to stabilize off of this board if you hit Shio Yu and Nico. That is a bit hard though, so here is a level 7 board that is easier to hit. You can drop Leona and Thresh here for 2 other units depending on what you hit. During the mid game, it's also important to scout. This is so we can see how many other people are playing Jade and Nivea. Since we want 3 star Nivea in the late game, this comp can only support one player. If you see more than that going for it, you're still fine as you can get a top 4 which is 2 star Nivea. But if you want to pivot and play another comp, you can pivot into Deja or a 10 cost dragon like Aesol or Ao Shin. On stage 4 1, you want to be level 7, and from here you have two different options. You can either roll at level 7 or you can go for a fast 8. Since we need both Shio Yu and Nico for this comp, and we would also like some legendaries, we prefer to roll level 8. Rolling at level 7 is not bad though, as we can still hit 4 costs, and we are likely to 2 star our 3 costs here. The games where you roll at level 7 are when you're 70 HP or lower, you're lost streaking, you can't go level 8 on 4 2 and roll there, or if a lot of other players are rolling down on this turn as well. When rolling down at level 7 on 4 1, it's very similar to rolling down on 3 5. You want to play 6 Jades if you hit Shio Yu, and if you didn't, play 3 Jades with some other units. The goal from there is to go level 8 on 5 1, and then roll for the rest of your comp there. So try not to roll below 10 to 20 gold, as we need the money to go level 8 later in the game. If you decide to fast 8, the goal is to end up with this board, and we can change it a lot based on our augments. If you get plus 1 jade, we want to play 9 jades. If there's a lot of magic damage in the lobby, we play Bard and Nami for 4 mystics. If you get plus 1 evokers, put in Sona for 4 evokers. You do not want to play legends in this comp even though we have 2 slots for them, as Anivia doesn't get that much value from the tankiness, and Volibear and Orn won't do too much without items. We also need evokers for this comp to work, so we don't want to play 9 jades without a heart or emblem as we need to play Lulu in the comp. Once you've 2 starred all your non-legendary units at level 8, you want to eco back up and slow roll for a Nivea 3 star. Since she is a 3 cost, it is doable in a lot of games as long as you're uncontested. A Nivea 3 star will make you win a lot of games, but without a Nivea 3 star, you usually need great items and augments on all carries and some legendary 2 stars to win games. That's pretty hard to achieve, so we always chase that 3 star Nivea when possible. If Anivia is contested, you have two other options. The first one is to roll for Shio Yu or Nico 3 star. Both of these will be amazing, and you can go for whichever you hit. To do this, you have to be uncontested on them, and you also need a lot of gold after first hitting your entire board 2 starred. The other option is to go level 9. Here you will add in another legendary, and also look to 2 star all your current legendary units. It's pretty expensive, so only do this if you have enough gold or HP to do so. If not, then just donk your roll and hope you're able to hit your 2 star legendaries at level 8. If you're able to go level 9 with a lot of gold, the most capped version of this comp looks like this. It's pretty expensive, but if you have a high roll game, then this is what you aim for to hit a first place. First, let's cover the impactful spells we have. Anivia targets her current target and shoots her AoE ball at that. Therefore, we want Anivia to target clumps of enemies. Shio Yu targets his current target so you want him to walk up and stun an impactful caster or tank. Nico stuns in a 2 hex radius, so we want units to wrap around her to stun as many of them as possible. Lulu targets the closest units, so we want her to be as close to Anivia to boost her attack speed. In case you didn't know, the Jade statue buffs do not stack. A champion either gets the buff or it doesn't, so you only need a champion to be adjacent to one statue to get the whole buff. Additionally, they deal damage to enemy champions when they die, so when we have multiple jade statues, we want to split up and put the additional ones in the front line to deal more damage. With that said, let's move on to general positioning with this comp, which looks like this. Here we have Nico in the front line to solo tank and to make units wrap around her. 
Shiyu is just behind her to not steal aggro and to also get value from the Jade Statue. The other 5 units are all around the Jade Statue to get the buff, and the melee champions are in the front. Yasuo is pulled 1 hex back to make sure Shiyu gets to walk forward. If you're running multiple units with a 4 hex range, make sure Anevia doesn't get trapped in the corner. Now let's move on to some end of positioning examples. Against the first guy, the big threat is Corki. Here we are funneling Yasuo down to the Corki. Shiyu will first walk up 1 hex and will then go to Namsi. Yasuo will walk around the Shiyu, and due to the limited hex space, the path to Corki is shorter from this point than the path to Namsi. We lose that on Jade value for the Yasuo and Bard, but losing 40% attack speed and 5% healing on Yasuo is not a big deal unless he has a lot of items, and Bard doesn't deal any damage, so losing 40% attack speed for him is not a deal breaker. Generally speaking, you don't want to lose Jade value on units. But against Cannoneers when all the damage is AoE, your team will get shredded if you're clumped. Anivia and Lulu are split off on the right side to not get hit by the Sona ult. Against the second guy, the big threat is Aesol. We have lined up our melee carry so that Shiyu walks 2 hexes and will hit both Alawi and Silas with his spell. Nika will stun the entire frontline as well as Vladimir after he walks over. This also results in a larger clump in the enemy frontline, resulting in larger AoE damage from Anivia. Even though Aesol is mostly AoE damage, he won't be dealing enough damage for it to be worth splitting up. Maybe if he is too stud with great items, we would have split off with Lulu and Anivia again. Against the third guy, the big threat is Deja. Shiyu is positioned to help deal with the Nunu. Nico is positioned to bait out the Hecarim ultimate. Yasuo is positioned to knock up the frontline. Here both teams will clump up, but overall, we will benefit more, as Anivia deals more AoE damage than Deja. Thank you so much for watching, if you learned something please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you want cheat sheets for any of my comp guides, they are available for YouTube members and patrons. Links to those are down in the description. And if you want to get better at TFT, join the Discord we got over 9000 other players there who are hungry to climb. And if you want to get coached by me, the information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care and see you in the next video.